Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Saturday, the second day of November 2024. And what we're going to find today is stories seem to change from one day to the next. These headlines, as we're going to notice as we get right to them. First of all, our first headline, we've got a new threat from Khomeini, the leader of Iran. Remember, we had one, what, Monday of this week? Well, now it's Saturday. He issues another threat to the U.S., as Israel and the Middle East prepares for a third Tehran attack. So we've got that story. All right. But then remember, uh, they're going to attack before the election on Tuesday. Well, that's changed now. Fearing a Trump win, Iran waits for U.S. election results before striking Israel. They don't want to give Trump any advantage by attacking Israel before the election because they think it would help Trump uh, doing it on Biden's watch. So they're going to wait till after Tuesday now. But then we read this story, Iran braces for Trump victory, fearing more Israeli strikes. And this whole story is about, as we'll see, they realize if Trump is president, it'll be kind of carte blanche. Israel will be able to do what they want to get this over with, and, and Trump is going to encourage that. So they're, they're, they're preparing for that also, too. Now, remember, we're going to have a Lebanon ceasefire. U.S. was brokering a ceasefire between Hezbollah and Lebanon and Israel. We'd have like a 60-day uh, ceasefire, and then there would be uh, the end of the fighting there and possibly the end of the fighting in Gaza. Well, that's all gone now, too. This story changes today. U.S. brokered Lebanese-Israeli truce falters amid doubts over unrealistic terms. And so that's gone by the way of all the earth. But then we have this. Remember, Trump wanted the war. Uh, he's told Netanyahu, this is one of our headlines the other day, he wanted the war with Gaza over by January 20th when he took office. Well, he said yesterday he wants the Lebanon war over too by January 20th when he takes office. So in other words, he wants the war both in the south at Gaza and the north with Lebanon and Hezbollah over by the time he takes office. And again, that'll be about the 20th of January, less than two months. And so we will see. We will see. Let's get these stories. These are fascinating, isn't it? That's why we need the breaking news. The headlines each day continue to change. Khomeini issues new threats to U.S. Uh, Israel as Middle East prepares for a third Tehran attack. He issues these new threats today. Enemies, including America and the Zionist regime, should know that they will undoubtedly receive a crushing response for what they do against Iran and the resistance front, Khomeini said. The Supreme Leader said today, Saturday, that the U.S. and Israel will undoubtedly receive this crushing response for what they have done. And he made it very clear. Now, his comments were to students ahead of the anniversary of the 1979 seizure of the U.S. Embassy in Tehran by hardline students shortly after the Islamic Revolution that ousted the U.S. back Shah of Iran. Those of us living at that time remember that very clearly. And so he again reiterated what he said this Monday. Uh, we're going to respond to what Israel did, and we're going to respond very strong strongly it's going to hurt them and threaten also to western interest the u.s the bases in the area so again this is the threat but we've seen this before and nothing comes about but now we find out again contrary to what they've been saying headline number two fearing a trump win israel iran is going to wait for the u.s election results before striking israel iran delays retaliatory strike on israel for u.s election results fearing further regional chaos might bolster trump's campaign meanwhile tensions rise as both sides prepare for potential post-election confrontation okay the week has passed since the israeli strike in iran yet the full scale of the destruction at the revolutionary guards bases continues to come to light despite iran's efforts to downplay the events New satellite images reveal damage to two buildings at the Kohar Missile Production Complex near Tehran, which had recently undergone expansion. In tandem with Iran's claim of a weak attack, the officials have uh, issued frequent threats against Israel, promising a decisive and painful response. However, like we said earlier, reports about the timing of any retaliatory strike have been conflicting. Some suggest a response before the U.S. elections, but now the story is the response is going to come afterward, partly due to the worry that this would help Donald Trump's campaign. Today, the Washington Post cited a source close to Israeli leadership who claimed that current intelligence point to Iran preparing an attack on Israel in the coming days. In other words, they're, everything they seem to be doing is pointing to some type of attack, but now it doesn't look like it'll come before Tuesday, but evidently it'll come soon. And this is kind of where we're at right now with all of this. And so uh, the National Revolutionary Guard spokesman remarked that Israel believes Iran will not retaliate 
He says, Zionists think Iran is reluctant to enter into a direct conflict, and the Iranian people are weary of resistance and unwilling to, to engage in a war with Israel, and basically saying, you, you don't know the half of it. We can't wait. The people of Iran can't wait to respond to Israel uh, for what they've done to us in this latest attack that really didn't do anything, according to them. So anyway, uh, the one thing that really gets me here uh, talks about, they got a Wall Street Journal story, the damage uh, that was done uh, by the Israeli attack a week ago, it was it will might delay the production of solid fuel missiles by a year or more regarding the S-300 defense systems. Remember the Russian system that they have, which were completely destroyed. A security source indicated that repairs or replacements could take several months. So in other words, be several months to a year before they get back rolling. That is Iran. But then this, uh, the journal also noted that Israel's response remained within the red lines defined by Washington as though Israel has to do what Daddy Washington says, right? Within the red lines, that just makes you sick. In other words, Washington, again, trying to tell Israel, as they've done from day one, how to fight a war for their own survival. All right, so we'll see what happens. Um, the attack seemingly will come, but now the latest is it's not going to come till after the election on Tuesday. How soon after, we just don't know. But this we do know, and this is a good story here, the next one. Iran is bracing for a Trump victory, fearing more Israeli strikes and Western sanctions. Tehran faces diminished leverage if Trump wins the November 5th U.S. election, fearing he could grant Israel the green light to hit nuclear sites and finalize U.S.-Saudi defense pact to shift regional balance of power. And that's precisely what he will do. Iran's leadership and allies are bracing for what he would they would regard as a dreadful outcome of the imminent U.S. presidential election, a return to power of Donald Trump. Opinion polls suggest the Republican Trump and Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris remain locked in a close contest. But Iranian leaders and their regional allies uh, are concerned if Trump will triumph on November 5th, it could spell more trouble for them. And their main concern, of course, is realistic because Trump will empower Netanyahu, remember, to get all this over with, to strike Iran's nuclear sites, to conduct targeted assassinations, and reimpose maximum pressure policy heightened sanctions on their oil industry. So they anticipate Trump, who was president from 2017 to 2021, will exert utmost pressure on Iranian Supreme Leader Khamenei to cave in by accepting a nuclear containment deal on terms set by himself and Israel. So uh, Trump's stance will obviously be more detrimental to Iran than Harris's would if she got elected. So we will wait and see. And that's what Iran is worried about as well they should. Now, here's a headline that... <laughs> Kind of killed the stories we've been doing the last two days, three days. U.S. brokered Lebanon-Israeli truce falters amid doubts over unrealistic terms. We were told the last couple of days it was within days, maybe minutes before it would be signed and everything signed, sealed, and delivered. Now, nope, not going to work. Lebanese sources anticipate escalation with parliamentary speaker Barry accusing Netanyahu of rejecting U.S. proposal. Sources say proposal fell through after Israel insisted on enforcing the agreement itself. American efforts to halt, halt fighting between Israel and Hezbollah have failed after the U.S. drafted an unrealistic ceasefire proposal and Israel's insistence on being able to enforce a truce directly. People briefed on the diplomacy told Reuters. Meanwhile, Lebanese President Parliament, Parliamentary Speaker Navi Berry claimed on Friday that Prime Minister Netanyahu rejected a U.S.-backed proposal for a ceasefire with Hezbollah. Uh, the Prime Minister rejected Lebanon's proposed roadmap, which is agreed upon by the U.S. envoy, he said, in an interview with an Arabic-language London-based newspaper. The newspaper went further and said political efforts to result the crisis have been postponed until when? After the U.S. elections. And it said Lebanese Al Jaid channels added only after this when negotiations to resolve the issue begin. Now, again, the agreement was a complete ceasefire between Lebanon and Israel, the deployment of the Lebanese army to the southern border, and withdrawal of all unofficial military presence to the north of the Latani River. In other words, that 18 miles no man's land between Israel and the Latani River needs to be no man's land, needs to be. Um, no Hezbollah there, no terrorists there. That's what it was supposed to be after 2006, and it never came to pass. And in Israel, what they said, well, again, we want to make sure this is enforced, so we want to be able to, you know, enforce this. If there's a problem, we want to be able to, you know, take out any terrorists immediately, not wait for the UN or some other group to do it. And yet that was not uh, 
satisfactory to Lebanon, not satisfactory to Hezbollah. And so uh, Resolution 1701, which again ended the 2006 Lebanon war, caused, called for the withdrawal of Israeli troops also. And Israelis did withdraw their troops at that particular time. Unfortunately, Hezbollah didn't. The UNIFIL, the United Nations, United Nothing soldiers came in and uh, allowed Hezbollah to build all these underground facilities. One of them would hold uh, literally a thousand people, a thousand people, a thousand terrorists with all this armament there to invade uh, northern Israel. They've been doing this for years and under the guise of the watchdog of the UN, which did nothing. And so now they just want to go back to the same old, same old, that is Lebanon and Hezbollah. Well, we'll let you know, UNIFIL, let the, let the United Nations make sure this doesn't happen. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, that's not going to work. So anyway, we're at an impasse. We will see if anything comes out of this. In the meantime, we've got bombing galore. Uh, um, the, my Red Alert app, as always, seems to want to go off right when I'm doing these uh, uh, programs here. Uh, uh, rockets coming over from Lebanon. There was a tremendous barrage, and a number of people were killed yesterday uh, from these. The Israelis were killed because of these rockets that are taking place, the attack. And so the fighting continues, and we'll keep looking at it and see what happens. Now, again, our last headline, which is interesting, uh, yesterday, U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump said he wants the war over by January 20th. He told an audience, including Arab Americans in the battleground state of Michigan, it's time to get the U.S.-Lebanon conflict over with. I know many people from Lebanon, we got to get this whole thing over with. Well, again, um, they would like to do that. They should. And if Israel's terms are acceptable, then they will, because Israel will make sure there's nothing that 18-mile stretch, but, uh, you know, Lebanese citizens, no terrorist group. And again, we've got Hezbollah and the Lebanese government objecting to that, saying, well, yes, but you can't enforce it. We'll enforce it. Yeah, just like they've enforced it since 2006, non-enforcement for 18 years. So it's interesting, isn't it, today, how different the stories are than yesterday. Yesterday, we had an agreement in the bag with Lebanon and uh, Israel, Hezbollah and Israel about stopping the fighting in the north. We had it in the bag that by Tuesday, there's going to be an attack uh, on Israel from Iran. They said it's going to take place before the election. Now, both those stories have changed. And so we'll see what happens tomorrow because things, again, continue to change as we look at the headlines each day. But what doesn't change is the word of God. And that's what we emphasize here. And so Please check out our website, Educating Our World, where we have 12 books on Bible prophecy. We deal with these issues in our book, 25 Signs. We're near the end, among others. They are free downloads, free downloads from the website. We never charge for anything because we want you to understand what's going on. So you can not be uninformed about what's going to take place according to the word of the living God. All right, I'm Don Stewart. If something comes up in the meantime, we'll get back to you. Until then, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.